So hi everyone, this is Country Music News International. My name is Nigel Sharp and today I've got another transatlantic call with Mr. Jeremy McComb, who's yeah. sitting over there, <laughs> way over there. It's a long way, way from, from where I am, which is near Frankfurt in Germany. And um, Jeremy's in Nashville, is that right? Yes, sir, sitting here on a uh, beautiful, sunny, 65 degree uh, February day, so can't beat that. And, and uh, nice to see you. You're, you're quite a few uh, ahead of me over there. So <laughs> how's <Yeah>. things looking? <laughs> well, right now it's looking pretty dark outside now. It's, <laughs> it's, it's already nighttime here. It's just gone, sure. just gone seven o'clock in the evening. Yeah, actually today was uh, sunny and warm here. I oh, well, relatively warm for February. Uh, cause last week we, we still had snow and stuff. So Jeremy, I've got a, f a sort of few questions, questions that I kind of marked down that I was going to ask you. The first one, okay. actually, one of your music videos, um, I think it's, uh, Cot Cotton's Getting High. Yeah. And there you are up on the stage, strumming away on the old guitar. And I'm looking at this guitar and thinking, why is the pick guard on the wrong side of the sound hole now i'm a guitar player so you i have to yeah. ask that question it's why is that well so it, it kind of started i've got a really hard up strum and so on my guitars i was kind of wearing out a groove on the top and what right. would happen is it was grabbing my picks and throwing them out of my hand and so i put the pick guard that's supposed to be on the bottom and flipped it over and put it on the top um, to stop that. And subsequently what ended up happening is I've worn a hole in the bottom of my guitar that you could drive a truck through. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to say that. Cause the thing I noticed was like, Hmm, what he needs is two pick guards. You exactly. Know? And, uh, I'm a little back ass words anyway. And so, okay. um, it just kind of became my thing. And so I, I started doing it to all my guitars. I've been doing it since, I don't know, probably you know, 2005 or something yeah. where I started doing that. So. so that thing's going to end up looking like Willie Nelson's guitar, right? Yeah, a little bit. Trigger, a little yeah. bit. It's, <laughs> I've had to have it rebraced quite a few times, oh, but, right. uh, but it's doing good. Okay. And the other sort of uh, critical question was, you're the man who said, if Music Row burnt down, I wouldn't even notice. I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, true. So, I don't know that you, that's makes you sound as if you're kind of mad with somebody or at something. Is that? No, I think I, my, I guess the quote of me saying, if music row burnt down, I, I wouldn't even notice is my career has really been based on touring and, mm -hmm. and being in front of people and connecting with people and being in clubs. And so when I first got out of the, the machine kind of the first time uh, from my first records, um, I just wanted to go out and connect with people. And so I made a, a conscious effort to make my career about the people who were standing in front of me and not the machine behind it. So okay. my point to that quote, uh, it doesn't come from a place of like ill will or, or malice or anything. It's, it's more or less that the, the people that really matter and have mattered in my career are the, are the people standing in front of us and not the, not the, machine that kind of goes behind it so i really just always focused on connecting with people who love music and and okay. uh, people who connect with um, hillbilly ass songwriters like me there you go <laughs> yeah because the average joe's entertainment uh, the sign is on the wall behind you that's uh, this is the office of your is it your record company or your... record label yeah, yeah there you go. So, <laughs> which is on music row isn't it uh, we're a little ways off there. The The nice ah, thing okay. is that everybody over at Average Joe's, we just do things different. It's artist driven. And if you have, um, you know, if you have a vision and a focus on what you want, they're here to aid in that instead of telling you what to be and what to do. They sign artists that, that they believe in the vision already and then get behind and kind of pour gasoline on the fire instead of curating a vision and a, and a mm -hmm. focus. They really bring in people that they believe are on the right track already. And then they kind of pour gas on the fire. So tell us a little bit more about Jeremy McComb. Where are you from and what got you into, uh, uh, you know, making music in the first place? 
Well, I grew up in North Idaho here in the States, which is in the Pacific Northwest, mm -hmm. really far Northwest. And uh, it's a really mountainous region, um, really cold in the uh, in, in winter. And, and uh, I'm a sixth generation musician. So I've been in clubs and hockey tonks my whole life, started playing um, on stage with my dad here and there when I was like five and then did some gospel opry stuff. And then, but really I, I spent all my life in a bar and, and honky tonks and sleeping behind my dad's amp. Um, had my first band when I was 13 and then quit school when I was 16 to go on the road and play music. And so I've been out here for a, a long time. I've been touring pretty heavy for the last 20 years. And so it's, um, it's been a, just a, an amazing journey and um, an amazing uh, university, I guess. Uh, I got all my education from the road. So okay. it, it really has been a, a hell of a ride. Yeah, talking about um, honky tonks, you actually own a honky tonk I called do. Nashville North. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's uh, it was the club that I started in, and it was the club that really gave me the platform to hone my craft. And the opportunity came about seven years ago to buy it and to turn it into kind of my own vision of it with one of my best friends, and and so we bought it and and uh, turned it into uh, kind of a Nashville experience in North Idaho, because North Idaho doesn't get a lot of Nashville experience. So. Yeah, okay. I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> it's about 2000 miles from here. So um, we run through, it's like a 700 seat uh, concert venue. And uh, we run through a bunch of my friends here from Nashville. And uh, it's just a big, big dance hall. Let's get to um, some, some of the music. Um, the most recent release is withdrawals, withdrawals. Yes, sir. And, uh, there's something happening with that video. I think it's been yeah. entered for some competition. Is that right? Well, it just started taking off. Like we, we did, a. I don't know if you're familiar with the movie, the big Lebowski, but it's, I uh, am. yeah, great. yeah. So great I'm a movie. huge fan of that movie and it, you know, it all takes place in a bowling alley. And so we were like, we got to do something in a bowling alley. And um so we put it out obviously on youtube and stuff and it kind of blew up i think it's sitting at a, about one hundred and forty thousand views in the last week or two and um and then cmt here in the states picked it up and um and so last week we came in number 11 on their countdown and so we've been uh, um, asking our fans and stuff to vote for us to move up higher on the countdown over on cmt okay. so it's really been amazing to we wrote that song when we were in sweden um, a couple of years back. And uh, it's really amazing to kind of see it come full circle and to have it on TV now and radio and doing all the stuff that he's doing. So it's just, uh, it's crazy. Let's get to the, uh, the songwriting. Are you the main man for that? Or do you work with somebody else? Or I work, Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I write on my own. There's stuff that I co-write and I'm kind of open when it comes to the creative process. I just, I, I love, um, doing stuff on my own. I love teaming up with people. I love, you know, finding songs that aren't mine that um, I connect with deeply. And, and so it's really just comes down to the song and the best song wins. And, and, um, you know, we try to figure out what we're trying to say and, and as we go into a project and, and then try to put together the right songs for, I guess uh, the other thing that uh, kind of really kind of caught my attention that I really liked was the energy that yeah. you see on the stage Do you, is that a, a critical part of you as a performer yeah i think uh, um connecting uh, you know everything that happens in those four walls when you get a chance like we got to play last night here in nashville and we don't play here very often but it's just um it's that freeing release of not having to worry about anything in that moment just being totally present and I try to approach everything like that in my life of just being totally present in the moment, being totally consumed by it and, and not focusing on something that's past and not focusing on what's coming up, but just trying to live directly in the moment of what you're doing. So then we've come to about the end of our time for today. So I'd like to say thanks very much to uh, Jeremy McComb. Yes, sir. Way over there in Nashville, Tennessee. Yes, I've never been to, uh, Tennessee. I've been over oh, to the States a few times, but uh, that's on my bucket list. You need to come. You got to come see it. Everybody needs yeah. to come to Nashville at least once. 
Yeah, I've been to Arizona, I've been to Florida, uh, Kansas, and um, you need to come to Idaho. That's where it's at. Well, now there's another question, isn't it? Is that the state that's famous for the potatoes, or yes. is that somewhere else? Yep, Idaho's the potato state, but that's like southern Idaho, and I'm oh. I'm from way north. Way up north. So come up, see the mountains. Uh, I've got cabins up in the mountains in North uh, Idaho and Western Montana, mm -hmm. and we can go up there. And uh, now there's can... a state, Montana. I'd I'd love to see some of that as well. Yeah, I, that's really where I grew up. Was between North Idaho and Western Montana. You can be okay. in bulk within about forty five minutes, and cool. um, it's uh, it's amazing. So we'd love to have you. I'd love to be there. <laughs> anyway, so. Jeremy, thanks again very much. We really appreciate you taking the time to uh, do the interview with us. And um, hopefully we'll get to see you over here as soon as possible. That would be yes, just great. Yes, sir. So this has been Country Music News International. My name's Nigel Sharp, and I would like to say thanks again to Jeremy and goodbye to you all. Bye. Thank you.